Hello and welcome back to this advanced guide for overclocking the RTX 280. Now this does apply to all Turing video cards to 270 to 280 Ti because the same principles apply to this. Now this is going to be directed towards the 280 but it will work on other video cards. Now in my written guide I used both Precision X1 and MSI Afterburner um, but since it's a video we kind of have to pick one or the other. I found for explaining things or showing things uh, on videos, Afterburner is kind of a bit more uh, finished right now. They just put out a new version and it's pretty much a little bit more stable than the Precision X1. Probably the next update will be a reverse. It kind of goes back and forth. So let's go ahead and close Precision X1. We don't need that open. Okay, so we're in Afterburner. What I like to do, especially if I'm doing some advanced settings, I still want to set all my profiles. I want to unlock the voltage. I also want to go to the fans and enable fan profile. Now this is going to allow the fan to run, operate based on my parameters set. I also want to set the power limit and temperature limit to max to get the best out of the, the video card there. So what does it mean to push the video card to its limit? So if I were to set the card to what I kind of know is the limit, I'm going to go a little bit lower, actually, just because on the memory. Just because I'm recording this, I don't want the, it to crash while recording this video. You can see here that, uh, you know, it's running pretty well. Now, when I, if you go to the curve, you can see here, this is what the NVIDIA curve is built here. And this is the curve I applied. You see how very linear it is? All it did is just take, took that number and put 155 into it. That just means that at the lowest setting it's 155 higher than the than the core clock and at the very top is 155 above that. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I know that 170 is a little bit is I can do 170 but the problem is I know that 180 crashes. Now 180 might crash because I don't have enough voltage in the video card can't apply that voltage, but it also might crash because of the previous settings. So going from 155 to 170, this uh, this graph might not represent very well. So if I were to linearly raise the whole number, so if I were to go here and, oops, I don't want curves. So if I go up here and do one, 180, oops, not 1000, 180. Oh, but it kept it kept my settings. But basically, if I were to do 180, it's going to go 180 above what it's already at. Now, what happens if between 150 and 180, there isn't enough voltage? But maybe 175 works a little bit lower. And so you can kind of, you see where I'm going here? You can kind of adjust everything and all the little numbers to reflect what settings you want to what voltage. Now you can also expand this, so if you uh, feel it's too small, you can make it bigger or smaller. It's really up to you. Um, and then you kind of adjust it. So I noticed that if I close this, my auto scanner settings, if I hit apply, I have, this is the curve that NVIDIA auto OC scanner has determined for me. It's, it said it's 79 higher than the base, so this represents what you could do with your uh, video card. So at the very top, it's 79 higher than what the lowest is. So this number is telling me, so 105 uh, at this voltage. I know I can go a little higher, so you might just want to go ahead and play the last few numbers, because the lower ones are good. It allows you to kind of keep the temperatures down and only rise, raise the temperatures when you're at a heavy load. And that's how it kind of boost operates is that it's not always 100%. It's not always max settings. It can be lower or higher based on the game. So right now we're in heaven benchmark. I know that this benchmark is a little bit dated and it doesn't stress the card that hard. It gets like 80% load instead of 100% like it used to. If you play at 4K, then the load goes higher. If you use a like 3D mark benchmark times by extreme, you know it's going to be 100%. And that's where you get crashes because a lot of times your crashes only come from when you are hitting a certain frequency, but that's because the, the load is that high. So if you're not going above 80%, you're not going to have a frequency that high. It kind of plays with itself. So 
that right there is the easiest way to explain your custom curve. Now, doing this, you're going to spend a long time adjusting. Okay, every time you do one point, you have to hit apply, you have to run a bunch of benchmarks. Uh, but in the end, it might be worth it if you're just trying to squeeze everything out of your video card. I personally don't use it because I don't have the time to do this. I'm not setting any world records. I don't care about the last five megahertz, but maybe you do. And that's what this whole guy is about is for including everybody under the sun that has different priorities than I do. Now, say that you don't want to use a custom curve. Say you just want to set your max settings right there. It doesn't mean this is this is the topic is a little bit mixy because messy, I should say, is because people think that, especially in my last videos, that I didn't touch the voltage and that was wrong. I need to make max voltage, 100% voltage. You need to do this because if you do max voltage, therefore you're going to have the highest possible overclock. That is partly true. You need more voltage as you see in the curve. You do need more voltage to go above a certain frequency. It's just kind of, it's necessary. But at the same time, when you have more voltage, your temperature is higher. Oops, I should put that back on. You can see your temperature is higher, and therefore your clock speed can be lower. It's not always the case, and so if you go in here and you go in temperature, you can actually see this is turned off, but this is what the curve should be like. It should be, oops, not let me do it. Well, nope. All right, scratch that. But basically, this is where the temperature drop off. So when it gets to this temperature, the clock speed should lower. And that is what the NVIDIA curve is built to do. So if you don't adjust this, which as you see, um, EVGA or even a, uh, MSI has done automatically for you, has adjusted that curve so you don't have to worry about it dropping off at the last second. But all our older generations, pretty much if you were at a certain frequency, as the temperature increased, so did the the voltage or so did the voltage increase, therefore the power draw increased, and therefore the temperature increased, and therefore your clock speed went down. It's still kind of the case you're gonna hit a wall quicker with a higher temperature because you don't need to pump in the max voltage if you're going to get the same clock speed. As you see here, if you're going to get to the same clock speed, there's no reason to have higher voltage. So in that case, it's something you want to think about and play around with. You don't have to set up 100%. And I think that's what something else people don't realize is that 100% doesn't mean it's 100% uh, of the voltage. It doesn't mean anything. It's just a tick. Uh, I kind of wish they just had on off because at the lowest voltage is 1.44 or 1.044, max is 1.068, and in the middle, middle is somewhere like that. It, it's not something that really now makes a difference for the RTX cards because they're so delicate on their voltage that when you're trying to adjust voltage, you're kind of uh, stuck where you are right now. So anyways, thanks for listening to my half ramble explaining how advanced overclocking works. Now, if you're into this already, you're probably going to say, well, Isaiah, I always know this. You didn't teach me anything new. That's fine. But for the people that just kind of get into that way of overclocking, they want to push the card a little bit farther than it was going, this is a great guide to get you going. I do have a written guide on the website. You can see the link below. And of course, thanks for watching.